Hello, and welcome to an intro to Anthra with two humans. I'm human number one, John McRae. And I'm human number two, John Lear. And this is the podcast where we reassess what it means to be human. Mm. And as a species, we've been on this planet for about 200 or 300,000 years. And I just feel... A blip in time. Very, very quick. Exactly. But I still feel that it's it's been long enough that it's time for us to maybe regroup as a species Mm -hmm. and just kind of talk about who we are, how we're doing... Mm. Uh, give some positive feedback, and then also maybe some some not criticism, but just some some constructive, constructive advice. criticism. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, a, it's our quarter. You're, it sounds like you're talking about it being our quarterly review, sort of. Exactly. Uh, so, <laughs> That's yeah. a good way to look at it. That's a good way to look at it. As if our species were a company, a progressive company, maybe, and mm. we just want to see how everybody's doing. Get some feedback from everybody. Uh huh. And yeah. uh, and you know, as we were getting ready to record this uh, over the past few weeks, I've been trying to think about what it means to be a human Mm. and, and being a human, both of us, you would think that we would have some sort of insider knowledge, some sort of expertise in being a human. No, honestly, John, I have no idea. Like if you were to ask me to define what it means to be, what would you say if somebody asked you to define what it's like to be a human? Well, I, I, I guess I'd go with the, uh, biological, you know, and the, you'd go to science first. Uh, we're a hominid, uh, 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 a a certain species of hominid and, uh, homo sapien, I believe we're called. Right. Right. And, uh, we're, we're (laughs) bipedal. We walk on two feet. Right. Uh, we have an opposable thumb. Right. And there are other primates that can do this stuff. I'm just saying who we are. And then we have this brain. This brain that has been able to create tools, you know, starting from a stick maybe that you stuck in the hole to get the ants on it. And now here we are podcasting. And I don't know how much we've Im- improved. The tools are better. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, see, that's what everybody always goes for, like, the opposable thumb or walking mm. on two legs. But, you know, the more I thought about it, the more I thought, well, there are definitely humans that, that have lost use of their opposable thumbs or lost their opposable thumbs. Good point. Or, mm-hmm. you know, don't have use of their legs or maybe not even have legs. And yet they're still human. So I was trying to think right. of something even beyond just the biological, because I don't know if that really defines us right now or defines right. us anymore. I mean, yeah, because at, at some point soon, they're going to be able to cut our heads off and put us in a robot. <laughs> you know, <Right>. so <laughs> are we still human? I, I would think so. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know. I, I'm looking forward to this journey because I want this to be anthropology is the study of humans wherever they are whenever they it's a study of hu- just of humans yeah so i'm really looking forward to this this journey we're about to embark upon of trying to d- figure out who we are same and, here uh, and i'm glad uh, you're leading the way i'm walking behind <laughs> you on the trail while you whack oh, no. the weeds oh yeah. no no <laughs> uh, no no i'll help i'll help okay but because i'm really looking at you know it's like i don't want to leave this will take us ever anywhere because we're yeah. looking at culture, which is cultures. It's going to be how people behave, what they were like a million years ago, what they may mm. be like in the future. I don't want to leave any stone unturned mm. or any any piece of petrified poop that we find. I want mm-hmm. to pick it up and, and look at it. So. Yeah, good. We learn it and, and taste it and smell it. <laughs> Use all of our senses. You know what I mean? Let's All use right. everything we have to figure I out wait till who we, the hell we are. We go out in the field and can actually do some of this stuff. I think oh, we that's need to great. Go on I location. love that. Yes, we do. Okay, so let's get started on this one. And the title of this episode is Let's Get It On, Hominin Hookups and Prehistoric Baby Daddies. Mm. And, and the reason we're starting with this one is... A sex, sales. Of, sex sales. Sex sales. And you want to lead... Lead with the hot stuff. <laughs> right. Like you're exactly. a smart podcaster. Uh, so a couple of weeks ago, you sent me 
Yes. An article you had found on Apple News, I think it was. Probably. And and it was an article by Laura Bysis, who's uh, a reporter. Yeah. And, but she was reporting on a study that was recently done by some researchers, researchers at the University of North Carolina or North Carolina State University, uh, Duke hmm. University and with Waterstrand University in South Africa. And the study was talking about they were comparing skulls, prehistoric skulls, to see if they could find evidence of interbreeding between Neanderthals and modern Homo sapiens. And I'm going to stop you right there because you're saying Neanderthals. And and every time you say it, I, I <laughs> it, it, it bugs me because – but it is the proper way to say it. I, it, Why has it, everybody it, been saying Neanderthals? Uh, you know, I, you know what? I really it doesn't bother me if how people pronounce it. I think it was tall t h a l means valley in German, and mm. the first ne the first skeletons of a Neanderthal were discovered in I think it was 1856 in the Neander Valley, God, uh, in Germany. So that's, that's the reason that why they call ago. them. No, no, we've only known about God. We don't know about anything. <laughs> exactly. I mean, exactly. We don't know anything. Yeah. So okay. So the the German pronunciation would be tall, tall. So right. so you're going tall, and I know for a fact because we went to high school together. We've known each other right. many many years, and you took German as I recall in high school. Uh, I did for a couple mm -hmm. of years. I don't know if yes. that's what's you know, well, leading me to pronounce it, as the I'm, I'm saying Thal. So maybe that I'm just, you know, this is anthropology too. You know, our right. education affects how we interface with culture. Right. I, I wouldn't get hung up on it. Like if you say Neanderthal in most movies, I don't think anybody, you'd have to be like a really uptight anthropologist to like roll your Agreed. eyes and kind of look at everybody else at the, at the party and kind of smile you and got, laugh to yourself. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Because I know I, I, right now I'm going to slip up. I, I will say, though, there is a difference between how European anthropologists spell it and American anthropologists spell it. And that, that really? goes for the uh, word archaeology as well. If you notice that in most American, uh, I would say most American governmental uh, publications about archaeology will spell it A R C H E O L O G Y, yeah. Yeah. and in Europe they still spell it A R C H A E O L O G Y. Well, that's crazy. That's just yeah. that's wrong. Yeah. That's and wrong. it's the same. It's the same with Neanderthal. Like most American governmental uh public if there are governmental publications i guess i should say of of neanderthals <laughs> they uh they spell it t-a-l they take out the h so. oh okay maybe that's Just why i okay that's good to know all right so so this study with all of these universities working together which is i always i always um admire that that they're able to do that yeah yeah, a lot of people get involved uh on the they all put their names on the study Mm -hmm. uh, brings a lot of publicity to your universe. It gets money, basically. Yeah. It gets oh, I see. I <clears throat> see. I didn't realize that. So, but the thing is, they were trying to look at if there was, if there had been interbreeding, and we'll get to it in the, in a moment. We'll get into more mm -hmm. detail about it. Mm -hmm. But the idea was, if there had been interbreeding between Neanderthals and uh, modern humans in yeah. the past, yeah, would there still today be some sort of remnant that you could see within the skulls of modern humans and also maybe archaic humans, humans like Cro-Magnon Cro Man or Cro-Magnon. Is that the one uh, prior to us, Cro-Magnon? Is that the yeah, one right before us? They're considered archaic humans. So they're, they're oh, modern I see. humans, I but see. they're just old, old and yeah. still very rugged skulls. I so that's what they were looking at. But before, again, I feel I feel you and I can actually add to this research. 
Absolutely. <laughs> Meaningful. There's no question in my mind that you and I are going to add something. We are going to be a footnote when they reprint this thing. Right. Because here's why I feel that way. You mm-hmm. happen to be one of the few people around today yes. who has actually lived yes. as a Neanderthal mm-hmm. in a homo sapien world. That's and I don't right. know if, if you want to go into a little bit of detail about how how that is. Well, I um, I am uh, one of the original Geico cavemen from the uh, Geico uh, commercials. I was in uh, probably 25 spots. Wow. Uh, wow. There were three of us that did most of them. Um, and I, I did 25 spots. And I did the very first one. Uh, where I had a, a microphone and I was n- not cool and I threw it down. <laughs> and I did a spot with Talia Shire, which I could not believe. Oscar nominee, or did she win? Yeah. Maybe she won for she Rocky. May have won. I don't know. Yeah. So she, I, you know, and I did tons of commercials. Billy Jean King. I did a spot with Billy Jean King. So anyway, wow. yes, I was the Geico caveman. I was uh, living the life of a Neanderthal for exactly. years. Exactly. For years. And so I feel this is kind of like uh, experimental archaeology in a sense, or experimental Mm. anthropology, in that we have your experiences, and maybe that will give us an insight into what it was like 40, 50,000 years ago, Neanderthals, Homo sapiens all living at the same time. So I want to come back to that. Well, I'll tell you, I'll 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 just give you one little tidbit just to kick it off. Itchy. (laughs) In a word, itchy. (laughs) Yeah, that's something you don't get from the skeletons of how no. itchy it was. To yeah, be there's no scientist that's going to be able to look at a skull and go, you know what? It was itchy as hell. <laughs> that's good to know. Good to yeah. know. So, also hard to talk around the teeth. Very really? hard to talk around the teeth. Yes. You know, and they everybody... had these crazy <laughs> teeth that would like fit on my teeth. So, it wasn't like those old. Um, vampire teeth that you know yeah. like when we were kids and halloween what nothing like that at all not like dentures at all it was these weird kind of plates that would hang off the edges of my front of the front of my teeth if you can imagine that little really? part of your tooth that sticks out you know they're kind of cur- so kind of hang there perfectly and stick there but you had to kind of talk around it so what would you, would you pull your lips back and then try to I was let just, go with I, it or how would you i don't know i just tried to you know i just didn't want to get fired <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell you the word i worked on the most though geico really <laughs> that's the one i practiced the most because i'm no dummy i'm you, still a uh i'm still a homo sapien you know what i mean <laughs> you know they they always uh one of the things uh anthropologists always talk about now is did the uh neanderthals actually have language and and they always try to look at like the hyoid bone and the mm. position of the head and What's the, the sco- hyoid bone the hyoid's the like a little little bone you have in your throat usually if people are choked mm. or strangled usually the the way the cops can tell that they've been strangled is that the hyoid bone has been broken oh um, jesus but the thing is, the hyoid bone, it, it's, it's right in the throat. It has something to do with um, speech. But anyway, they, they found out that they finally found a hyoid bone of a Neanderthal. Um, and it's essentially the same hyoid bone that we have. I, so they oh, could have had well, it. But now what you're saying, if <laughs> with their <laughs> shutting jaws and teeth, that it may have been difficult. It may not have been anything to do with mental yeah, faculty. Just, they had to enunciate. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they have very proper speech. Very. We're, we're, we're... They had to talk like this in order to be understood. Oh, God. Yeah. God, that must if, have been awful. If it wasn't hard enough killing a woolly mammoth, <laughs> you know? Trying to shout that across a valley somewhere. <laughs> but Stick the spear <laughs> in his neck. What? Stick the spear in his ah, and that's when he gets gorged. <laughs> so, let's just to give you a little background before we get into the study and a few other things. Yeah, like I was saying, Neanderthals have become really hot since you sent me that article. 
I think I've read like five other Neanderthal articles. Me too. There's like Neanderthals are all over the place suddenly. Yeah. Yeah. They're, what what do you what do you make of that? I don't know. They're like the Kardashians of the uh, hominin <laughs> world. They've suddenly you can't do nothing. Open, <laughs> you can't open up a, a a website or anything without seeing some article about the uh, Neanderthals. But we've had we've had that article, right. and then Spante Pabo, who's what? a Swedish geneticist. Oh, okay. And he was the one who, he was the one who decoded the ancient Neanderthal DNA genome, oh, and that's really? only happened okay. within the last ten years. And he right. he just just two weeks ago won the uh, Nobel Prize for medicine, but for and that for, for the, decoding for the, that. the genetics. Yeah. Well, how does that help us getting those genomes? Like, what is it? Just you can compare it to modern man and see. Like, what does it do for us? Well, we'll get to it uh, in a little more detail. But the okay. thing is, if they interbred and we're through the, the DNA, we see that they did interbreed. Hell yeah. But there's those parts of the Neanderthal DNA that we still have hmm. that influences our health today. For example, wow. some of them can... Some of the Neanderthal DNA can lead to uh, predisposition to diabetes, for example. Really? And that right. comes from the Neanderthals? Right. And wow. Or possibly depression was another one that's been mentioned. Oh, then I've got Neanderthal in me, I'll tell you that. <laughs> for sure. God, so they were kind of sickly, uh, or they just... Well, According they to just Sponte, weren't as healthy as us, and so when they or not us, but the pre us, and so. Well, what Svante Pabo, and you could go online and find his. Uh, you could go on YouTube's and and find his uh, some of his lectures, and they're very I'll, interesting. I'll try to throw it's, some links uh, for those of you who are watching this on uh, on YouTube. I'll, I'll I'll throw some links down there below. He's a very I, funny, I would, funny guy. I, I, oh, good. I was going to ask you, yeah. I, I'd love for you to say his name as many times as possible. It's, it's <laughs> soothing. I had to go online and listen to it a few times. And then I had to listen to more just to make certain that people weren't mispronouncing it. You're doing uh, great. That's fantastic. But uh, what he thinks is that they were actually genetic. Uh, they gave a little advantage to the Neanderthals. Hmm. At that time period in that environment. And now we don't really need them. And so that's the reason why they may be causing us uh, some some health problems. I see. Uh, Benefits on the front enough. end, but not so good on the back end. Right. Story the environment's of my life. Changed. Yeah. We come out of the <laughs> gate running 100 miles per hour, and then you get towards the end and you're dragging your ass. Understood. Exactly. Exactly. So, basically, for the last 150 years, and anthropology is a pretty new science, mm -hmm. but for the last 150 years, there, there's been kind of two theories of evolution of modern humans. Hmm. And one theory was called the multi-region evolutionary hypothesis. And in the multi-region evolutionary hypothesis, the idea was that Homo erectus... All right, get the jokes out. Get the, all those snickers. <laughs> oh, what, boy. Homo I've got some of that in me, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Homo erectus. <laughs> Every time. Was a hominin which uh, evolved about 2 million years ago. Mm -hmm. But about 1.8 million years ago, Homo erectus left Africa, went out into different parts of the world. Or I Eurasia at that point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Eurasia. <laughs> and then evolved into the different types of uh, humans that we have now. Is that Lucy? Was Lucy Homo erectus? Uh, no, that she was a Australopithecus afarensis. Oh. oh, boy. So that was a little bit before. I think she was more okay. like three, 3.5 million years ago. Okay, okay. So, yeah. I love and that it, book. Lucy, that's a great book. And you, you've you seen a, a very detailed replica of her 
of Lucy's skeletons, right? A skeleton. Uh, her skull, at least. Her yeah. skull, right. And it's yeah. very small, right? Yeah, they're tiny. They they were like three and a half feet tall, but still still walking upright. Uh, bipedal. Weird. Yeah. They, they describe them as being uh, kind of uh, human from the waist down, ape from the waist up. Weird. Like, yeah. I know yeah. people like that. I know people like that. <laughs> Just I've worked out right in the, the gym. <laughs> I've worked out in the gym with people. <laughs> All right. So that was the first, the theory. Homo erectus goes out into Eurasia, different parts, and then responding to the environment, evolved into what the, all the variation that we see now. Understood. The other hypothesis was the out of Africa hypothesis, or the replacement hypothesis. And that hypothesis was that there were already Neanderthals out in Eurasia. And then at about 100,000 years ago, modern humans, Homo sapiens, left Africa, came into Eurasia, Mm -hmm. and then just Mm -hmm. out-competed the Neanderthals. Because of the monolith. The monolith taught them (laughs) to use bones to beat each other up. That's one part of it. Yeah, you could you could add that if you wanted to. <laughs> we, but why haven't we found the monolith? Right, that's what I want to know. You, you yeah. know the trouble I have, and I've actually read studies where people have gone in and, and like using statistics have shown how modern humans could outcompete Neanderthals in certain niches of an mm. environment for certain uh, uh, materials for example, hmm. and resources. But I'm right. wondering, the problem I've always had that, with that is there weren't that many people around that. <laughs> then. So like how, if you had a hundred, a couple hundred thousand people, yeah. how would it be possible for you just to outcompete? Wouldn't they just leave somewhere, you know, go somewhere else, for right. example? Right, there was plenty of room. It's not like you were all p- bottled up on a peninsula somewhere, yeah. right? Or or maybe, I mean, it, it kind of leads you to think that, like, the Neanderthals would go out to go hunting and then maybe see, like, a couple humans, like, you know, miles away down in there right. and be like, oh, forget it. You know, they're already there. Let's get out of here. You know, that, the, yeah, that the, doesn't seem right. Yeah. It's, it seems odd to me that way. I mean, that's, I've seen the proof, the statistical proof that that happened to a certain extent. Is but this I'm, the theory that you, the out of Africa theory, is that the theory that you subscribe to? Or do you subscribe to the, uh, uh, what's the name of the other one where you spread the, out? The multi-region. Yeah, multi-region. I think the multi-region, it, with the DNA, and mind you, the multi-region was kind of, it was popular when all we had, like I say, it's been around for a long time, but it mm-hmm. was when we had just skulls, and right. people would try to just compare skulls to see, you know, this is a strange looking skull. How did that get here? Right. Um, that was... It's kind of been disproven, or I don't want to say disproven because there are certain ah. people that still still hold on to part of it or believe. Well, part there's of it. always people who do that. We know that. <laughs> yeah, but, but the there. the DNA has really kind of shown uh, that the second the out of Africa out of hypothesis Africa. was kind of more it fits the DNA evidence that we have now, and really wow. we've only had that DNA evidence for about twelve years. Like Jesus. Yeah, are, this is the cutting edge. We're finally right. figuring some stuff out about w- where we came from, right? Whence right. we came from. It and what they what they saw was, it looks like that humans and modern humans mm-hmm. and Neanderthals mm-hmm. were actually interbreeding. And that's yeah. how we end up with, if you're a European, you probably have, I've seen anywhere from uh, estimates from one to 4% of your DNA is, wow. if you're of European ancestry, if you're of Asian ancestry, it's even greater than that. Really? Somewhere from like, like five to 7% is huh. what I, everybody, why? I, I've seen different, uh, why more, why more higher percentage with Asian just. Well, it was in is, that part of the world, or it, it, it's it's interesting because one of the theories is, uh, well, first of all, how do I? I'll, I'll go with 
in 2008, uh, in a, a place in Siberia called the Denosova Cave, yes, they found a finger bone of a child, mm-hmm. okay, yeah. a prehistoric child. And when they ran the DNA on that, they realized that this finger bone is not modern human and it's not Neanderthal. No oh boy. And so they found out that there was Love another child. <laughs> there was mm-hmm. another another prehistoric human or another prehistoric hominin out there that they now call the Denosovans. And they've even found where there's Denosovan DNA mixed with Neanderthal DNA, Neanderthal DNA mixed with human DNA, human DNA. Everybody mixed with- was banging everybody. It was which one- doesn't surprise me at all. What else was you there know, to you, do? Right. <laughs> you know, we you look at the uh, the eight eighteen hundreds, the wild wild west. You know what? Yeah. None of the TV shows and uh, and we worked on a western together. And none of yeah. what none of the TV shows or movies ever talk about is bestiality and homosexuality <laughs> because there was a ton of it. it it'd be Am kind I of right? hard to write that into a script. Yeah. yeah, they don't. They don't. America doesn't want to hear about this stuff. But the point I'm making is. What else? It's painful, hard life. They right. didn't even have alcohol back then. They had nothing but screwing. Right. So this so, doesn't surprise me at all. Would would you? Oh uh, yes. Well, I, 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 yes. <laughs> yes, I know. I was trying to. Think, I was trying to think of something with for a Bigfoot, for example. Yes. Would you, if would, <laughs> yeah, why not? If I'm well, if I am I. Well, I, let me let me get a bigger uh, am, now. You mean if I ran into yeah, a big yeah. foot like now in a out, bar? No, no, no. Not in a bar. How Wait, about you, out in the woods? Nobody's around. Mm-hmm. Nobody's around. You're out camping mm-hmm. by yourself. Yeah. You come across a big foot in the stream, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. washing off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He or she well, hasn't look, seen you yet, and then they look no, up. No, and... I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. But here, if you lock me in a in an area with her with nobody else, you know, like survival, survivor, survivor. I mean, and you just leave me out there for months on end. Eventually. Yes. (laughs) What do you, within months on end, what do you you mean? Like, I'm I'm saying if I have nothing else to do and I'm trapped with the Bigfoot lady. Yeah. Eventually it's like my theory on college. Everybody goes to college for four years, or they used to. Now, I, apparently, yeah. it's college is over. But everybody's. My theory was, if we went eight years, everybody would end up sleeping with everybody. Huh? You know, four years. Yeah. There's a lot of sex going on. Eight years, I think we all would have banged each other. It gives you something in common, is what you're saying. <laughs> something <laughs> yeah. as you go on your life, you have a connection yeah. to other people. Yeah, so. and you're trapped with that kind of group, and so eventually, what are you going to yeah. do? What, you know, yeah. What's a human to do? I was wondering, just to go back to your example of like if you were with a Bigfoot for <laughs> for several months, mm-hmm. how many months do you think it would take you to 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 like in your mind kind of think, "Hey, I'm the la- I'm the sole survivor. We we got to do this. We got mm-hmm. we got to do." I mean, do you think? I mean, I'm just wondering when you think you would come to that <laughs> that kind of conclusion of like. <laughs> I mean, Probably at first you're trying to live platonically with the big <laughs> right, point. but eventually it, you're lonely. What, like and, six weeks? Uh, six weeks? Like six I got weeks. it. I, I bet I could do six weeks for sure. Really? Yeah, because I've seen pictures of the of the, of the Bigfoot, you know, and it's not. I don't know. I don't know if I could do it. Maybe never. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how I behave in that situation. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's there'd let's definitely hope. be mutual masturbation. Let's put it that way, side by yeah, side well, masturbation. A, a little frotage, maybe like just kind of <laughs> rubbing against one another. Yeah, in, in it's your lonely. Uh... You've got nothing. For... <laughs> I mean, uh... all right. Well, now I yeah. mean that gives a perspective of like what would happen. Mm-hmm. I mean, from the bones, we can't tell of how mm-hmm. Neanderthals and humans. And Denosovans, what the circumstances were. Denosovans is a weird name. It sounds like they're aliens or something. It sounds like something in Scientology. 
It's Denisovans. D E N I S O V A N. Is it named after somebody? Or it's named after no, the it's cave? The cave, Denosaba yeah. Cave. Yeah. Oh, okay. And Denosaba <laughs> Cave, I think, is it's near the area where they just, just this week, like today or, or yesterday, I think there was another article about Neanderthals talking about they had discovered a Neanderthal family where they had yeah. found bones in the same cave. Yeah. And it looked like bones from a father and a, the DNA showed that it was also bones from his daughter. Oh, so, man. so that's the big, yeah. big story right now. But getting back to the point there, we don't really know the circumstances of, right. of humans and Neanderthals interbreeding. Yeah. And we don't know exactly how it went down, but we know it went down. Oh, We've it got went down. Hard it went evidence. Down. <laughs> it, it definitely went down. But uh but we don't know we don't know how. Like what was what, was it just like, you know, you bump into each other like yep. scavenging a carcass starts. or something, and you look mm-hmm. across from uh, over the gutted belly of a, a mm-hmm. mammoth and like mm-hmm. you know something and then happens. A saber-toothed There's... tiger appears and and you kind of huddle together, you know, and then you're like, hmm. You know, yeah. and it happens. It just happens. We all know. And as the Geico caveman, I can tell you, uh, <laughs> very, very attractive to humans. W- pe- ladies loved the Geico really? caveman. Yes. Really? There was something triggered in their deep reptilian brain. Uh, and and yes, I'm not, I'm actually very serious. <laughs> so I ha- I have a story if you want to hear it. Well, let's let me just get a little bit not just late. Let's say we'll get to the ladies because okay, that's great, what I great, think great, is great, the great. real research. Because I, to me, I'm like wondering was it, you know, some some research shows that the, the interbreeding happened first of all very quickly, like in the Middle East, for example, <laughs> like right when humans came out of. Africa, there was some interbreeding. Boom. They just and saw them and was like, let's do it this. Right. Like, like, was it what was the attract or was it like a kind of like all about Eve sort of thing where like the mm. modern humans were kind of like trying to worm their way into the graces of the, you know, the species that was already there just to kind of mm. get their knowledge and then replace them or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm, and then they movie. think that there was some other interbreeding that happened probably a little bit later, like 60, mm. 50,000 years ago. Jesus, that's amazing how they can figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's still crazy. I don't know. The the times periods, I mean, we're talking thousands of years, tens of thousands right. of years. So it's really, right. again, we're not going to have photographs of like a Neanderthal coming out of a homo sapien cave or something right you know at night the sleeping walk of away, shame. slinking away the first yeah. walk of shame <laughs> yeah but but i think you had mentioned that it wasn't just women but it, but it was just homo sapiens themselves were love the caveman everywhere we went because we did because the when the when the commercials started taking off Suddenly we were doing public events and things too. And people yeah. went nuts over it. They just loved the idea of um, this prehistoric uh, man who was, you know, able, you know, very metrosexual and, uh, you know, uh, well-groomed, I guess, except for yeah, yeah. Uh, the hair and uh, did, beard. Did they want to talk to you or was it more... The- would they would just see you and be like, or was it, did they want, it, I'm we, trying to figure, figure out like prehistorically, did, did the modern humans want to get to know the Neanderthal or was it just like, I think they were it. just taken with us. It was like, <laughs> we were stars, you know, it was like being yeah. a beetle. Except, really? you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I imagine, I mean, I remember we did this thing at, um, Oh God, Chateau Marmont. We shot a spot there. A yeah. commercial. And for some reason, they did the makeup at the hotel across the street, across the way. I don't know why. Yeah. And and then they walked us over to the set to shoot the thing. So we had to walk up Sunset Boulevard. And this was a, it was a night shoot. 
So this yeah. is like, I don't know. It was like a Friday or Saturday night walking up Sunset Boulevard. Yeah. Uh, and people were, <laughs> they couldn't believe it. They could not believe it. We had like a crowd, photographs, yeah. people. It, it was a little scary because all the, we didn't, you know, we didn't yeah. know yeah. then how big a deal it was. And the only, <laughs> the only security we had was our makeup guys. And let me tell you, special effects makeup guys, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're not Neanderthals. Let's put it that way. <laughs> they're more Did like you- Lucy's. <laughs> Did you feel, uh, as they crowded around you, did you feel like they were trying to replace you? <laughs> like they were, <laughs> they were arguing, they were trying to like outcompete you for your niche. They were like, mm, no, but they wanted me. I feel like yeah. they just, they, they saw me as kind of like a, a trophy. Uh, 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 there was something like, because I was different and, right, you know, they right. were excited by that. You know. Maybe that's like a remnant. Maybe that's what modern humans, when they saw Neanderthals 60,000 years ago, were like, I got to have that. Yeah. That's what I want. Yep. Because you know? yeah. Neanderthals were bigger, right? Bigger and more rugged. Not, not, not that more much. Rugged, definitely. You know what? It's actually, I'm. I must have a lot of Neanderthal because I'm like, <laughs> I'm built like a Neanderthal. I, I'm like, I have a big head. Yeah, uh, I'm like a good five one. foot six, rugged yep. head, rugged bones. Rugged, rugged. Uh, You've conked that thing. On, <laughs> I've seen you conk that head. Never, never like breaks a bowling open. ball. Like a it bowling is. ball. It is. And, uh, and honestly, I've never had anybody like throw themselves at me like that. Like, <laughs> like what, what would the Neanderthal apparently had? And I look like oh, a Neanderthal now. You have. I've seen. What about in France? That girl in France. No, she, threw, no. she was all over you. No, it was. I've seen a few. They get no. taken with you. They anyway, do. This in isn't your about, day. I'm talking in about my day. Neanderthal genes here. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> so the but, Neanderthals but, were shorter than than the. They were uh, like five foot five, five foot six, 150 okay. pounds. That wow. was for for men. Jesus, and, and women, I always pictured them like Klingons from Star Trek, you know, big yeah. heads with rugged and features and the, all the women big uh, Amazon like yeah. and the men yeah. all gigantic. But no, they weren't that. No, that's kind of, you know, there was a lot of, uh, I, I don't know, a lot of uh, prejudice against them when their bones mm. were first found in the 1850s and in Western Europeans, it was the age of colonialism and all of that. Mm. And it was like this idea that Western European culture was superior. And then it's like, we, well, these people aren't around anymore. Look at their skulls. They must be these uh, kind of brutish uh, barbarians is kind of how mm. people envision them. And that's kind of what we I still see. have. And I think even the, the Geico caveman, Yes. Was playing against that of the idea. Yes. So simple, even a gay, caveman could do it. Yes. And he, and the thing and is offended he, by that, like the actual because because it turns out we were closer to Neanderthals right. than. Wow. Right. They actually that. have bigger brains than we did. Their brain was like fifteen hundred cc's cubic centimeters. And ours usually averages about one thousand three hundred fifty cubic centimeters. So they had yeah, bigger brains than we did. Jesus. Uh, Why did they disappear? Why did we win? Well, I think we we just kind of we, we kind of uh seduced them out of existence, I guess. We, <laughs> maybe. You're saying we fucked the Neanderthal out of them. <laughs> right, is basically exactly. what we did. Exactly. You know what? That's I love that idea. I mean, I'm sure it's not as uh, it wasn't as pleasant a time uh, uh, process as right. I'm imagining, but I still like the idea of love and and sex uh being yeah. the uh, the tool rather than violence although i'm right. sure they were combined horribly yeah i yeah it it would seem like you know and if if you were a neanderthal you'd probably be like okay whatever <laughs> what yeah, you wanna, I, I mean i am <laughs> I, yeah <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do with me? Okay. And then next yeah. thing you know, it's like you're the only one left or something. You know? Right. That's, Jesus. Uh, That's amazing. But, but let's go back to your story about, uh, you had told me a story one time about yes. going to the Oscars as well. Yes. I think this is going to be our 
this is going in the journal article that we're yes. publishing. Okay, about so this. this is where the footnote goes. Uh, I okay, so the guy, as I said, the guy came huge, and uh, we were invited to public events. And I, we, the Geico caveman was invited to the Oscars. <laughs> now, we both live in, or you've lived in LA, and I, I'm in LA, and and anybody can get a ticket to the Oscars, really, uh, the gallery. I mean, you have to wait in line and stuff, but that, but the the ticket that's hard to get are the after parties, and this is where the real A listers are at these after parties, and the uh, Geico caveman was invited. <laughs> To the biggest Oscar after party ever. And so they they dressed me up and put me in in a tuxedo. And they even hired an actress to play my date, this gorgeous blonde (laughs) uh, model. And and we went to this after party. And the stars went nuts. John Voight, Oscar (laughs) award winner John Voight. Pushing people out of the way to have a photo with the guy who wow. man. Wow. Can you imagine? And I wow. mean, everybody, I have tons of photos. Bo Derek, I'm looking around my office. Right <laughs> uh, who was, uh, tons of different people. They all wanted pictures uh, with the guy cocaine man. And, you know, that, that was fun. And then that, you know, then died down a little. And my, I lost my date. She was off, uh, God knows, go, doing what. And I was kind of, you know, left. And I was talking to this young starlet, gorgeous, gorgeous, in a red dress, you know, amazing. And we're talking, and all of a sudden, I realize that she's kind of hitting on me. <laughs> and, 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 and she makes it clear. And she says, you know, I, you know, she basically said, I'd, I'd like you to come back to my place and gives me her number. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sort of, I'm standing there and I'm like, I, I said, I, you know, I have to tell you that, you know, I'm not real, right? <laughs> like, you know, that I'm just a guy underneath this with stuff glued on me. And she said, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I want the I I want to have sex with the Geico caveman. Wow. Uh, yeah. Wow. And I, so, and I didn't do it. I didn't do you, it. Really? I did not do it. No. Really? I did not do it. Uh, and, and yes, I was married at the time, and that, of course, had a lot to do with it. But you know what was really the top priority for not doing it? Mm. It's so uncomfortable wearing that <laughs> shit. I just wanted it off my face. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, I was, I'm imagining, like, if you had done it, and, like, yeah, it'd yeah. be great if with if the alcohol was still in everybody's mm-hmm. system or whatever, mm-hmm. but that yeah. next morning, when you woke up, and that latex yeah. was, like, oh. ha- hanging off of your face, oh, and, like, and just seeing, like, part of the, like, your shirts, all your clothes are off, so you just got, it like, a rat, like, a little fur around your hands, oh. and then, and then trying to get dressed and, and get out of there. And, and then the like, walk of shame again. Yeah. 200,000 yeah. years later, <laughs> another walk of shame, a Neanderthal walking out of a, yeah. Yeah. I think very just similar. Saw, just saw like that would, thank you, because that really gives us like an insight, a window into the past of thank like you. a I'm Homo glad sapien to... trying mm-hmm. to seduce a Neanderthal. Like, a, you, you know, we yeah. have some experience. Ex, experiential evidence here of what well, uh, that's this is so good to know i mean look there were lots of pluses to doing that job and i i want to say here and now thank you geico <laughs> thank you uh i i enjoy geico insurance i'm pro uh all of the geico commercials very i i am i would i want to get on my knees and say thank you geico because that was fantastic but now to have another bonus out of the whole thing that i can help uh, anthropologists this is uh, academia better understanding exactly like we uh i don't know maybe we can we could apply for a grant Mm -hmm. and uh dress you up again (laughs) get you a job somewhere as a caveman and see if uh you know, we have to we have to replicate as a, with a scientific process. We we have to Wait. come up with a hypothesis, and then do put I have you to wear the just, fur all over my body? Because I'd rather. 
I mean, before, nah. come on, before it was just for TV. You know what I yeah. mean? But now this is yeah. for like, this is for oh, no. humanity. Okay. Oh. Knowledge. Collective. See, the hair, the body hair is the worst part of that job. The worst part. I did a, a, a spot with Billie Jean King where I wore uh, very short, short <laughs> tennis shorts. <laughs> and they had to do leg hair all the way really? up, like to yeah, all the way up. And really? it was a woman who did the hair, and wow. she's working on me. There's like three people working on you, and she's working on me. And all of a sudden, she How picks they- up my <laughs> get get this. She picks up my my you know personal my my penis and my scrotum, yeah. moves them out of the way, and glues the hair on in that little you know area. Really. There. Yeah, and I remember thinking, Jesus, this isn't right. I mean, this is way yeah. before uh, where things are now. But I was like, this is not right. And then I realized, no, it is right. She's a professional. Don't talk about it. Just get it over with. Glue the hair to the taint and let's move on. Why at that moment, what was going through your? Were you thinking like, why is this? Why is Geico putting this hair up here under, underneath my, what? my scrotum. Were you thinking like, like what kind of commercial is this going to be? Or no, maybe, no. Maybe I, this I is understand. going to be like the director afterwards. Like, okay, we've paid the bills. Now let's make some art, you know? <laughs> no, it was, I had short shorts and yeah. it was there in the wide shot. You would have been able to, to see. <laughs> uh, so they, somebody, yeah. somebody froze it. During the uh-huh. football game or something, as the commercial uh-huh. was on, Go they look. could look and see like he's not a real. He's not man. real. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. Look under his legs. I don't so, know. Yeah. How did they? How did they put the the hair on? Did they just like like brush glue on and just throw hair? Or was it? Uh... Uh, no, they had all different types of ways of doing it depending on the shot. They had that. And that was for the stuff where it was like you wouldn't see it very much, like back hair or whatever. Um, and then they had this sheets of hair that came in from China <laughs> that were just like that they were custom made. Oh. All this stuff was very expensive and looked so real you wouldn't believe it. But then get this for a close up, like if there was an insert shot on my hand, yeah, they would do this electric thing where they would hook up electric wires to my hand and sprinkle hair on it and then run a current and the hairs would pop up from static electricity and it would look like they were growing out of my skin. Isn't that crazy? Did you feel the the current or was that? Uh, Maybe I could, I don't know how much of it was psychosomatic versus what, but it was weird looking. I mean, it was weird. the the guy working in a factory somewhere in the world making leg hairs for the guy okay uh, yeah <laughs> i don't just, know i mean yeah. i've been there i've done that <laughs> I've done that exact job it was just something else all right so let's get back to uh the matters at hand yes so i don't know it's so from your experience it's looking mm. again like i say this could turn Neanderthal research, human evolution. Yeah. Because Upside now down. it's no longer, I mean, it was always thought, well, there were so many hu- modern Homo sapiens came into the mm-hmm. Neanderthal. Like if there were 50, Svante Pabo. Mm-hmm. Said it again. God, I love that. Love it. Svante Pabo said, probably if you had 50 times more modern humans than Neanderthals, that would probably account for the amount of Neanderthal DNA we still have in us today. Meaning hmm. if that, that many people coming in wow. and kind of just absorbing, uh, over, yeah, I go overwhelming the, the population of Neanderthals or Denosophans. But from what you're saying, it was probably, it could have been a lot less even because oh, yeah. you have a homo sapien with a, with a crush and suddenly, you know, who knows yeah. what happens to human evolution. Yeah. That, that DNA is going to be spread thin, <laughs> real thin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. Is there, I think we've. It, I, love is a powerful thing. Passion is a powerful, powerful thing. And um, 
I, I for one, feel, I don't know, slightly more optimistic about us. You know? Really? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Maybe, Maybe we will be able to you know, fuck the differences out of ourselves, <laughs> you know, that was, uh, we're so concerned by it, by right, all the differences right. between us, you know, maybe at some point we can just all get it on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a, 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 an eon of love. Wow. Yeah. All right. Maybe it's going to start right up. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll launch it. <clears throat> yeah. See, we're not so different. And just mm-hmm. like, come on, all of us, everybody, mm-hmm. yeah, by the thousands, by the thousands, like a big right. old right. Or worldwide orgy. Correct the errors of the past. Yes, we just yeah. all get it on. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. well said, well said. All right, uh, all right. Well, this was our pilot episode. Hmm. I, I'm very pleased. Uh, I think uh, I think we've we've accomplished a lot, really. Our right. First I'm episode. expecting a call from Svante Pabo oh, at God. some point just to check in and, and give us a thank you mm-hmm. <laughs> for, mm-hmm. for, for this insight. Into, Let the footnotes uh, begin. <laughs> <laughs> I would love one day to to pick up a, a journal article. And somewhere down there, see this podcast listed as mm-hmm. a as an end note or footnote. Oh. I don't care what kind of note. Just just make it a note. I know it to be the note. one where it's the little cross, the little cr- sword thing. Oh yeah, I want yeah. that. I want the sword. What is it? That's, That's a... like they've run out of numbers or something. Right. Right. Like we gotta, right. Then they to go to the sword. Mm-hmm. I want a sword. How do you run out of numbers? Uh, for for I footnotes. Don't I don't know. If, if don't you have know. to use that sword, you have too many footnotes. Yeah, that's what that's I right. say. That's right. That's yeah. right. Stop Remember lying. your audience. Remember your yeah. audience. That's what yeah. I say. All uh, right. Well, it, it's been a pleasure. Uh, this is uh, human number two, John Lear. And this is human number one, John McRae. And you've been listening to an intro to Anthro with two humans. And we hope we've provided some little insight into what it means to be human. And we hope that you join us in the future as we continue this journey Mm -hmm. of Mm self-discovery. We're gonna gaze. Let's, we, all of us humans, let's look at our (laughs) own belly button. Let's gaze at the navel. I would say, go out, the first person you see tomorrow morning, just grab them by the shoulders, look in their eyes, and say, I know you. I know you. (laughs) And I love you. Uh-huh. And, and if let's it see leads what... to something else, and of course it has to be consensual. Right. But if right. it leads to something else, go with it. Because you're helping right. uh, the, uh, homo sapiens. Let's let's consciously try to change the trajectory of human evolution. <laughs> let's That's let's right. see where we can take it. Mm-hmm. If we all think Have together. Have sex with work someone together. different than you. Find Every somebody night. different from you. Right. And have sex with them every night. A new Let's person give a, that's different. a conundrum to some anthropologist 10,000 years from now. Mm-hmm. Let's just see where we can take it. What happens to yes. us? So, all right. That I'm willing happen. to try. This would, be, this would be more than a footnote. This <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us. I look forward to uh, continuing this discussion later. John, thank you as always. Oh, a pleasure. A pleasure. And, uh, we'll see- We will see you all again soon. Thanks. Yep. Thank you.